He is the leading political activist for UFO disclosure in America and the CEO of the Paradigm Research Group. Stephen Bassett is next on Conundrums. The way to make government responsible is to hold it accountable. And the way to make government accountable is to make it transparent so that the American people can know exactly what decisions are being ma made, how they're being made, and whether their interests are being well served. The directives I am giving my administration today on how to interpret the Freedom of Information Act will do just that. For a long time now, there's been too much secrecy in this city. The old rules said that if there was a defensible argument, for not disclosing something to the American people, then it should not be disclosed. That era is now over. Starting today, every agency and department should know that this administration stands on the side, not of those who seek to withhold information, but those who seek to make it known. To be sure, issues like personal privacy and national security must be treated with the care they demand. But the mere fact that you have the legal power to keep something secret does not mean you should always use it. The Freedom of Information Act is perhaps the most powerful instrument we have for making our government honest and transparent and of holding it accountable. And I expect members of my administration not simply to live up to the letter, but also the spirit of this law. I will also hold myself as president to a new standard of openness. Going forward, any time the American people want to know something that I or a former president wants to withhold, we will have to consult with the Attorney General and the White House Counsel, whose business it is to ensure compliance with the rule of law. Information will not be withheld just because I say so. It will be beheld, uh, withheld because a separate authority believes my request is well grounded in the Constitution. Let me say it as simply as I can. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this presidency. The founder of the Paradigm Research Organization, uh, or rather Paradigm Research Group, uh, Stephen Bassett, is our guest tonight. And uh, I want to welcome you to, you to the show, uh, Stephen. Great to be with you. Well, you know, the president has called for an open and transparent uh, government, and mm -hmm. uh, we heard him say that at the beginning of the program. Do you believe that we are in that open and transparent government now? I mean, are we seeing uh, we're getting closer to UFO disclosure? Uh, yeah, no. Have we have we have we achieved the uh, summum bonum of open and transparency? No. <laughs> um, but some, so he's done some very interesting things. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, Obama came into a mess without question. The, the the economy virtually collapsed prior to the election, and uh, it was it was a mess. So he a lot of what he might have done or could have done has been tabled. Um, but it's very notable that one of the first things that Obama did after the inauguration was the next day. He signed two presidential memoranda and one uh, uh, executive direct uh, um, executive order. Mm -hmm. The executive order uh, reversed the additional restrictions that George Bush had put on the Presidential Records Act shortly after he became president in 2000. And well, he did this in 2001. Uh, these restrictions made it more difficult to get records from the record uh, presidential archives of his father, uh, his father's vice presidential uh, records, and as well as uh, Ronald Reagan. A lot of people noted this and were kind of wondering, why did he do that? We think we know. So uh, Obama reverses that day one. Then to the two memoranda, one was uh, a memoranda indicating that his his uh, uh, administration was going to demand uh, an open and transparent operation on the part of the agencies mm -hmm. under him. Right. Uh, and the other was uh, a memorandum that the FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act, would be reformed to make it more user friendly, make it more uh, on the side of the public as opposed to on the side of the government, which is what it was. And the mm -hmm. FOIA was essentially a sham in a sense. 
if you were just trying to get some mundane stuff from the government and, and you didn't know where to get it, you could file uh, and so forth, and you could get some, some documents that might be useful to you. But if you needed anything that was truly controversial or the government didn't want to give you, they wouldn't give it to you, period. Right. So you could file, they wouldn't give it to you. So what, right? So he, he did that. That was very, very notable. Um, then, um, not too many months ago, uh, Obama signed a presidential directive this was right at the end of the year, I think it was in December, uh, setting up a, uh, a national declassification center. Uh-huh. Uh, and and in, in the National Archives, this was, this was then designed to, to uh, be the basis for uh, releasing a, a greater number of uh, classified documents sooner. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, this is, this is powerful stuff, though it doesn't get a lot of news. Right. Uh, and it did but what what I but in the meantime, as people have probably noted, um, his administration has been doing too, a, a lot behind the scenes. It has not been as open as it ought to be, uh, and the, and his and his opponents have clearly pointed that out and attacked him and what have you. Um, but what's particularly notable about what he's doing is that while he's still struggling with being able to to set up the administration in lieu of the the crisis that he'd been facing one after another. These, these acts that he's taken with the presidential directives, uh, what they're doing is they're setting the uh, uh, basis for the release of documents, I believe, in the post-disclosure world. In other words, assuming he is the disclosure president. Now, what do I mean by that? Yeah, if I was going to ask you, do you think he's going to be the president that releases this information? I think it will come out during his term. Uh, I don't see how the truth of Barbo can last. Mm-hmm much longer. So it'll happen in his term. If not him, then his administration and another government will do it uh, and and they'll get the credit. But but what he's done is is that if the government were to disclose the ET presence on Monday, Mm -hmm. then there's going to be a huge demand for information from the government on this subject. Right. right? Uh, And clearly the government's going to have to start releasing some files, no question. Mm -hmm. But it's not like they can drag boxes of files out in the White House lawn and tell people to come on down and get them. I mean, all of that stuff has to be released under legal protocols. It has to be released appropriately. Right. And uh, and so what he's doing is he's starting to, to, to reduce the barriers to that. He's starting to create the, meth, the methodology for that. Uh, so you can bet that the UFO files that get released post-disclosure are going to go through the National Declassification Center at the Archives. So, again, what I'm seeing what I want to see. Uh, and that's good. Great. Uh, and, and that's my comment on that. And um, it's not just a, a USA thing. It's a worldwide disclosure. So do you think that there are talks with other countries uh, to release the information that they have? Is there anything like that going on now? If there's any talks with other countries, they're not telling us. That's for mm-hmm. sure. Um, the, the circumstances are other nations are are ready to end the truth embargo. Mm-hmm. Uh, so far, they're still deferring to the United States to lead this. They're, but they're releasing their files uh, in preparation and to position themselves on the right side of the issue. Uh, the first major release, well, the first action of these other nations that are breaking ranks was France's Cometa report in 1999-2000. Uh, France started releasing its files in 2007, the, the United Kingdom in 2006. Brazil, uh, Uruguay, Denmark, Sweden, uh, Fran- um, the United Kingdom, Canada, recently New Zealand, and the Soviet and Russia is uh, indicated it's going to release some files from the Navy. All of this is is significant and, and indicating that these countries are moving forward and sending a message to the United States. Now, the United States has done nothing, and there's a reason for that. Mm-hmm. The United States is where all the focus is still. It is the the the, the organizer. Of the truth embargo, and the nation that will probably disclose. If the United States were to do what UK is doing, start releasing thousands of UFO files um, um, uh, proactively without without being pressured, it would immediately trigger a media firestorm. They'd be all over it, and it would probably end the truth embargo. And so, until they're ready to end the truth embargo, they can't do anything. Right. I mean, they have to they have to remain kind of frozen in place. Um, uh, and 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 do nothing until they're ready to do it, and it'll happen very fast because they're not going. They don't want anything to leak, and you'll just wake up one morning and and, and learn there's some sort of press conference 
plan that night and and we're off to the races and that's and that's how that was my next question is how do you think disclosure will happen do you think it'll be just a quick brief announcement or it's going to be something that uh will trickle along for a few days <laughs> uh, it, it will not be a brief announcement yeah. and it will not tri- well it will be a, it will not be a brief announcement and then we will be in the post disclosure world uh, let me describe it as best i can okay. what i think will happen and i'm dying to find out if i'm right you know you can imagine that um, in order to avoid leaks, once a decision has been made between Obama's people and uh, the military intelligence committees that run this, uh, they will have to act very quickly. Seven days, ten days, not much more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, because any leak will create a media storm and, 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 and it'll look like they're being chased into disclosure, right? Hounded. Uh, they, uh, the president will probably call for a bit of time uh, for um, an evening, mm-hmm. probably Friday, because they'd, they'd like people to be able to relax over the weekend and contemplate. Uh, so I'm thinking it'll have to be after rush hour. So it'll be like 7 o'clock on a Friday night. And they may not and probably will not tell the media what it is. Uh, but he'll only ask for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and so they go, oh, I'll give you a few minutes, what the hell. And so there'll be a lot of speculation, but it'll be about something. I think it'll be about the Iraq war or something. Uh-huh. So, okay. So then come that evening, uh, just before the broadcast, my guess is Obama's people will go to the, uh, the, the, uh, the network and say, uh, well, he's going to talk for, for a very brief minute, but then we have a major news conference uh, coming up after that, and you will cover it, right? Uh-huh. It's not option. You're going to cover it, and you want to cover it. And then the media go, well, what is it? And they say, you don't have to wait a little bit longer. This will be that day, probably. And then, So then Obama will go on that night. If he's smart, what he'll do is he will, he will tell the people uh, from the Oval Office that this evening they're going to receive some extremely important information. Uh-huh. And in not many words, he will say something to the effect that, um, that, that th- this information is incredibly, very important, that he has fully authorized the release of this information, and that the public should not be alarmed, uh-huh. right? That they should be, they should take this with, with equanimity and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and absorb it and deal with it in an appropriate fashion. And then he will say, and, and, and now I'm going to, uh, 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 we're going to account go over to a press conference that's been set up, probably somewhere like the National Academy of Sciences or something. But I think it'll be the Defense Department. It won't be military. All right. That'll be it. He won't make the announcement. And the reason he, he shouldn't is because it over-politicizes it. It makes him look like he's trying to reach for too much glory. Uh-huh. Uh, and this is a nonpartisan thing. So it'll then go to the press conference. And there will be uh, a, a, a panel of people, probably 15 or so, sitting behind some nice tables, and there will be a moderator. Uh-huh. And the moderator will come to the podium, and it will be the moderator selected for this press conference that will announce the ET presence. And it will be somebody who is non-political, very well-liked, very respected, very sharp. Uh-huh. A perfect, I think a perfect candidate, but not the only one for that role, would be Michio Kaku. Uh-huh. And he will go to the podium, and it will be the moderator, the non-political person, that announces to the world that the planet is, in fact, being engaged by multiple extraterrestrial civilizations and that the United States government withheld that formal acknowledgement for these past 60 years for national security reasons, uh, but that based upon their assessment of the current situation, they could now tell the public and begin telling the public about this. And uh, at that point, say a few more things. And then they will go to the panel, and then each of these members of the panel will speak for a few minutes. All right, mm-hmm. they will. They will have probably been. Uh, how would you say? They would have been approached to do this. Who knows? Within 24 hours of that event, maybe not much more than that. 24, 36 hours. So that there are no said, leaks. So that there no would leaks. be no so leaks. Said you're going to be there, and you've got 24 hours to come up with about three or four minutes of sagacious comment. From your perspective on this announcement, 
Uh, and there'll be somebody there from, of course, the Defense Department and the intelligence agency. There'll be somebody there from religion. There'll be someone there from uh, some other of what respected institutions uh, who are known to be you know, uh, smart people who deal with uh, the human condition. And uh, they, they'll cover a range of perspectives, and they will each give about three, four minutes, right, mm -hmm. of their thoughts, all which will be encouraging and supportive. And then they'll open it up to the press, uh, but with restrictions. I mean, they say there's, there's a great deal they cannot talk about yet, uh, but they'll answer questions that they can answer. And the moderator will probably be, uh, and there'll probably be someone else there that will help to ensure that things don't get said that shouldn't be said. And then the press will start asking a ton of questions. The press conference will go on for a while. They'd be smart if they go long, not short. Uh, and the press will try to find out as much as they can. Be of, we can't tell you now, we can't tell you now, maybe a little later, this kind of thing. Um, and then that'll be it. It'll be over. And then the public will have, spend the weekend thinking about that. There'll be a huge amount of cable news. All the cable news stations will go 24-7. Uh, the networks will go. If the networks are smart, they won't inter interrupt too much programming. They'll do some stuff. They'll bring in some guests and what have you, but they won't. They'll show a lot of the regular programming. So if there's like a sports event scheduled, they'll have it. Mm -hmm. This this shows normalcy. Right. It shows, okay, yeah, there's extraterrestrials, but yeah, we got a game to play here, you know? Okay. Exactly. Uh, and, but they'll do some specials, and this will go on for the weekend, and then starting Monday, the press, who over the weekend will have quickly decided that they're on the side of us mm -hmm. from this point forward, okay? No more uh, taking notes at the White House press conference and re regurgitating the, uh, the press talking points. They are totally on us, and they will be, they are geared up with the bit between their teeth. Yes. To uh, to go after what is easily the biggest news story of all time, and the government knows this. Yes, and so starting that Monday morning, um, the game begins. We are in the post disclosure world at that point, right? And uh, the public will want to know everything immediately, and the government will want to tell them some things and much of it later, and the back and forth will begin. Do you think? Uh, that and over three years, we we'll, we will start learning what we want to know. Over that weekend, hypothetically, do you think they would? drag out a crash saucer or an alien body or something like that. I mean, because there's going to be this, okay, you've said this, now prove it. Show us something. Yeah. Well, I mean, for a huge number of people, they will they will need any proof because they already know mm -hmm. it's true. Mm -hmm. And so they'll go, yeah, well, it's about time you told us. But there will some people want some proof. Uh, no, no alien bodies, no crash vehicle. Believe me, the government has plenty of things it could show to make, the, make it clear. Right. That not only is it true, but they're they're serious about it. Um, there are any any number of things they could do. More more than likely, if, if what if, uh, the most benign stuff they could do would be um, to show some gun camera footage uh -huh. of some of their planes going up to intercept, uh, and they'll show the craft uh, in clear uh, some of these craft in clear um, uh, imagery. They'll show it performing a bit, taking off leaving the jets behind, that kind of thing. That would be pretty impressive. Uh, I, I, I don't think anybody will need much more than that. Though they'll want much more than that. They'll want everything. Right. Um, but it won't be difficult. And that's true of any nation. It's true of the U.K., France, Russia, China. Any one of them can produce that kind of immediate visual confirmation. Right. And post-disclosure, how does it change the world? Science, religion, politics? What? Ten days after disclosure, what's the world going to be like? Have you got? Have you got a month or two? I mean, uh, <laughs> a uh, lot. Well, uh, as, as I as I as I often say, um, our civil war, which lasted five years, is a hugely uh, attractive historical event, and there've been about sixty thousand books written about it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the the disclosure event and the uh, aftermath, the following years, one, two, three, four, five. Probably two, three, four hundred thousand books will be written about it. Right, because uh, it will change the world. It, yeah, it, it, that's how big it is, um, and everything will change. Some things only slightly, some things hugely, uh, and of course the following years is will chronicle all that. And and uh, the disclosure movement, one of the disclosure movements, the questions being posed to the public is. Uh, as the world changes, how much involvement do you want to have? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to help shape this new world that's going to emerge from that, or do you just going to let the the old guard, you know, shape it for you, however they want? 
Right. Um, this is a pretty important question, and I, I hope that the public uh, 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 decides in favor of getting really involved. And and to an individual uh, level, what should an individual do to prepare for this sort of news coming out? It depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. uh, most, the, 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 in general, my comment for the whole general public is uh, try to stay relaxed and calm and enjoy it, right? And don't jump on every conspiracy theory that turns up and every... every uh, uh, Notion, I don't know. Put out there. Mm -hmm. Just is relax and absorb the information. That's the basic thing. Now, um, it's for the activists out there. Uh, you know, start getting involved in groups that are addressing this issue. Get behind the disclosure movement. If you happen to be incredibly wealthy, we need funding. We need right. funding for these, these groups so that we can be uh, have a say in the post-disclosure world. Uh, the in, in, in general. Start funding the people that have been working on this issue for 5, 10, 20, 25, 30 years uh, so that we can have a say. Otherwise, a bunch of people will just pop up from Harvard and some of these schools and say, oh, we're experts in all this. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll fix it. For, we'll take care of it for you. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll instruct the government how to, how to deal with this. We're experts. We've never said anything about this over the last 60 years, but we're really experts. Trust us. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Uh, so I think the, 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 the very wealthy need to get behind the disclosure movement and the people in it. Uh, and support their uh, their institutions and structures, and build more, and and and, and so that we can uh, we can have as strong as say in the post disclosure world as possible, um, and, and and people will will get political about it. Uh, one of the most interesting phenomena that I'm looking forward to seeing is that 95 percent or more, I'm sure, guessing but pretty confident, uh, of the contactees who are having direct interaction with extraterrestrials, physical interaction will come out of the closet. Most of them will come out of the closet pretty quickly mm -hmm. uh, because, well, you know, it's right. a new, new world. And, is, uh, is the world ready for this? Hard. Do you think the world well, is now, ready for this? It doesn't matter whether it's ready or not. I, I think mm -hmm. it is. I, I think it's more than ready, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. It's going to happen anyway. Uh, you know, I mean, you could, you could spend, you know, many hours discussing why it's ready, but let's just cut the chase. Mm -hmm. the, the number one grossing movie in the world right now uh, which will soon reach three billion dollars in, in gross ticket sales uh, is about extraterrestrials. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to know. And for the last twenty years, every major motion picture just about has been about ETs in some way. So we're being Plenty prepared, of. sort of, sort of, for it. I think it's top thirty or so grossing, uh, you know, in terms of ticket sales in the world, movies. Uh -huh. About a third now about extraterrestrials. What more do you need to know? I mean, it's. Mm -hmm. Uh, the public knows this is true, and, and Hollywood knows it's true, and, and uh, so they can't get enough of these movies. So that's – we're here. We're ready. I mean, I think we are ready. But again, again, it doesn't matter. It's going to happen. You know, were we ready for the Copernican Revolution? <laughs> were we ready to find out the Earth wasn't the center of the universe? Well, I guess maybe we were, maybe we weren't, but we are not, and uh, that was going to come, come out, and that's just the way it is. What do you say to people who say, oh, this UFO thing, there's nothing to it, just forget it, it's not important? <laughs> I, you know, well, one, you need to be sympathetic. Mm -hmm. Because everyone uh, on the planet right now who is 63 or younger has never lived a day of their life that wasn't under the truth embargo that was set up by the United States government back in 47 forward, uh, which was designed to completely undermine the ability of people to make a, a, an informed judgment about this. Right. So they're, they're sort of victims of the truth embargo to the extent that it matters to them. Uh, NASA's a victim of the truth embargo. The universities in this country, to some degree the press, were all victims of this propaganda program. Um, so you have to be sympathetic. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the evidence is out there. It's been out there for decades. Those, if everyone will get to the point, get to the issue when they're ready, they will make their conclusions when they're ready. Uh, generally, those who believe the earth are still flat are actually, it's kind of a hoax. Not a hoax. It's a, it's, it's entertainment. It's humor. Uh -huh. In other words, they'll argue about it, but they don't really believe it. Okay. But it wasn't that long ago where there, there still were some people that thought the earth was flat. Uh, and what are you going to do? I mean, you know, they'll, they'll figure it's around when they're, when they're ready to do that and, they'll move on 
that's the best way to think about it. Well, with your various contacts within the government, are you getting any kind of feedback from government officials that this may be coming soon or later or that there's a timetable maybe? Let's go back to your original statement. Uh, there's no way they're going to say anything. Yeah. Any that's... hints, any trial balloons, what do you think will happen? You could launch a media frenzy and then you've got, you got members of the administration and members of Congress being chased down the hall by hordes of reporters, right, with cameras clicking. Mm-hmm. And it didn't look so good. No, they're not going to do anything. And 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 but France can. Fran- yeah. So so when France releases its UFO files, that's another indication that they're probably not going to disclose ahead of the U.S. Because uh, if they were going to do it, they probably would do nothing, and then they'd pop it out there. Or mm-hmm. but maybe not. Maybe by releasing the UFO files, France or the U.K. or 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 uh, Denmark uh, or, or Brazil. Uh, are, are, are setting the stage or setting the stage for disclosure uh, by them meaning okay we've released our files we've, we've gotten ourselves positioned on the right side of the issue mm-hmm. so uh, uh, now if we disclose it'll look even better uh, people will not be shocked by that so who knows again uh, President Obama needs to get the message and we've certainly been sending it to him yes that uh, if he doesn't disclose pretty soon do you think that uh, there are high-level meetings going on uh, now this year that are, yeah, I know this is probably something you want, but do you think that there are high-level meetings going on now that are preparing for a disclosure like this? There should be. Mm-hmm. There should be. Somebody from his administration needs to be uh, 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 talking with the military intelligence managers down there mm-hmm. and, uh, and uh, setting the parameters for for doing this, uh, though, and then the question is, who approaches who? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's already happened. Um, I will say this: with respect to any internal meetings that might be taking place, uh, and the interface between the administration and the military-industrial complex, there is one person above all you need to pay attention to and watch, and that's John Podesta, the CEO of the Center for American Progress. And why him? He's the one. It doesn't mean it'll be him, but I'm just saying he's the one. He, he's at the top of my list as someone that would be, be uh, make, making those negotiations. Right. Okay. And uh, tell me about your organization, the Paradigm Research Group. Uh, when was it founded, and and what does it do? And and I mean, I know that you're uh, working for Disclosure, but what all do you have there? Paradigm Research Group was founded for one purpose, and that was to end the truth embargo. Uh-huh. Uh it's a political activist organization. It's not a research organization. And an initial thing that it did was to register on behalf of some research organizations, thus Paradigm Research Group, mm-hmm. uh, on the UFO issue, which got the, impre- the attention of the political press pretty quickly, as you can imagine. Uh, and it has been, along with a lot of other organizations and, and, uh, and people since the mid-'90s, uh, trying to build a, a worldwide disclosure movement. Mm-hmm. Um, it hasn't, and it hasn't happened fast enough for one primary reason. There's just no money. We've had to do this with, with uh, uh, practically no money, being as creative as we can. Fortunately, from the early 90s forward, we had the Internet. And the Internet is a, is a huge sea change mm-hmm. in activism and political power and empowerment. Uh, so thanks to the Internet, we, we were able to, to, to have a movement, keep it going, uh, even without funding of any note. And how do you uh, raise money? How do you raise money for the organization, for the group? Well, you've got websites. You have a website. It has a contribution page. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I meet and make connections. You try to establish relationships with people. Uh, but the number of individuals within the, the, the framework of the truth embargo in the U.S., and we have you know, millions of millionaires. I mean, we've got tons of people mm-hmm. with huge amounts of money that, We'll never have to worry about about their money ever again. Uh, uh, They're still fundamentally constrained by the truth embargo. They're they're afraid that if they were to fund this work, people might make a joke about them. Some of them are afraid the government might harass them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, that's less and less true. I mean, there are people who make a joke about anything. uh, But I can assure you that, that a very substantial portion of the population would would stand up and give a standing ovation to individual that would do this. And the government is, is not 
is not really bothering people on this now. It's not doing much of anything uh, since late 99. So, but they don't know that. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I'm, I went to Europe last year and I'm in Australia, um, uh, because outside of the U.S., I think the, the stig stigma and the concerns are less. Uh, and so we're hoping to find some, some serious so that we can do much more than we are. I can assure you the disclosure movement could be three, four, ten times more powerful than it is now. And uh, why does that matter? Um, because disclosure is inevitable. So why does it matter? It matters for an incredibly important reason that I hope everybody can eventually understand that the world now is an extremely problematic place that there was once we had a cold war where you know the great threat was nuclear war and if it didn't happen we were happy uh and there was this the standoff between these two huge powers that's over now we have a vastly complicated world it's overpopulated and heading towards three billion more people uh we've got major environmental issues we've got major human conditions issues we've got nuclear weapons all over the place uh any number of things could trigger some extremely unpleasant uh, events and uh, turn the 21st century into a living nightmare, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And so here's the, here is the equation. Whatever is coming, it is critical that it happen in the post-disclosure world. If a, if a nuclear war is going to break out between Pakistan and India, it needs to happen in the post-disclosure world. If somebody smuggles a tactical nuke into the United States across our wide open southern border and blows up an American city, it needs to happen in the post-disclosure world. If we're faced with a major environmental catastrophe uh, and we need to address it, it needs to be addressed in the post-disclosure world right. um, and so forth. I could just go down the list, hundreds and hundreds of things. Why? Because we have been living under certain rules an old paradigm mode of thinking for many thousands of years. And that thinking no longer works. Right. And we will continue to, 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 to conduct our affairs based on those protocols until we get a new set of protocols. And uh, that, that new set of protocols will, it, it, it's all, it, the only thing that could possibly truly change world perspectives right now is the disclosure event. Mm -hmm. So if we get disclosure done tomorrow, right. then Everything after that is the post-disclosure world, which means that when, when, when say, uh, India uh, tries to make a decision about to, or how to respond to some provocation from Pakistan, if a U.S. city is nuked by uh, a terrorist bomb and, and we decide to uh, and we sit down to decide what, how we're going to respond, we will be doing that with the awareness that the, the, the planet Earth is, is not alone in the galaxy. There are other civilizations. Uh, there's new technology that's uh, going to be coming out, uh, world-changing technology, and we might be going to the stars in a couple of years. This is a fairly significant new variable in their equations. Exactly. And then the hope is that they will make better decisions. You see what I'm saying? Right. But if disclosure hasn't taken place, then that will not be a variable in their decision-making. And they may make more bad decisions. Uh, and there you have it. Let, let me give you a perfect example. Uh if I mean this is this is somewhat narrow and crude, but I, it it makes the point. Uh, if disclosure had taken place 15 years ago in 2005, three years after the end of the Cold War, mm -hmm. and we had brought out the ET technology, including the energy tech, and 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 and, and developed it quickly, and started replacing oil and gas, uh, it's a good chance the oil, the Gulf of Mexico wouldn't be filling up with oil right now. Exactly. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's a trillion dollars saved, right? Because it's going to have cost, costing a trillion before it's done. So that we just saved a trillion bucks. Not bad, huh? So you say, well, people, why do you want to disclose? Well, I'd like to save a trillion there and a trillion here. Again, it's you know, it's kind of like here's another way of putting it. Okay, you're out for a, a canoe ride, right, in uh -huh. some national park, and you get a little disoriented, and the next thing you know, you're you're headed for the falls. You see, right, um, and it makes a big difference when you start paddling in reverse. You see, in other words, if if the, if the, if the canoe is already three quarters of the way over the falls, it's too late to paddle in reverse. Right. All right. So you need to start before that. 
Mm-hmm. So people say, well, you know, eventually we're going to have to paddle, so when does it matter? Well, it matters pretty much. And opening up all of these new technologies will, will create jobs because businesses and companies will want to in, invent or create using this information new technologies oh, for God. for the entire it's, world. It's, you can't imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, hang on a second. Sure. Let me shut this. <laughs> um, uh, you can't imagine. Uh, the Well, look, it comes down to this. We need to be able to know and be able to to develop as a species, not just as a few government scientists in an underground lab. Right. The technology that allows these saucers to be anti-gravitic and the energy that drives them. Uh, The government's had 60 years and unlimited billions of dollars of funding uh, and access to pretty sharp scientists, I'm sure, and engineers to study these vehicles. And... We, I have, we have pretty strong evidence they've already created their own anti-gravitic vehicles, which means that they've, they've clearly made substantial progress on anti-gravitic propulsion. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we don't know what, how, what they're powering them with, and we don't know how much they've, they've done with the energy systems. But uh, the saucers don't run on oil and gas. We know that. Yeah. Um, so it, that technology, if it's, if it's anywhere as good as we think it is, changes all of the world's equations. Um, and could create a business renaissance, technology revolution. Uh, it could make it possible to create all the necessary fresh water we'll ever need, thus all the necessary food we'll ever need, thus bringing the third world out of misery. Uh-huh. Um, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, it's 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 the it would be it's the biggest event in human history. It's the biggest paradigm change in human history. The technological revolution that it'll create will be the equivalent of all the previous tech revolutions in history combined, mm-hmm. uh, and it'll happen very quickly. It'll be a, a, a rapid thing. Um, there will be problems, and and there will be people that try to exploit it because people just can't help but being people, right? Right. Uh, but we'll have to deal with that. But nevertheless, uh, the list of positive changes that disclosure could generate is an extremely long list. As you travel around the world, do you find uh, this idea of disclosure um, more popular in other countries than America or more uh, widely accepted? The barrier to an, an interest in, disclo- in, in exopolitics is, is, is much lower outside the U.S. Mm-hmm. Not in all countries. I mean, they're, they're obviously countries where the barrier to anything is, is higher, but uh, Europe, they're very interested in it and very political. Uh, the interest in Australia is about the same level as it is in the U.S., but strong. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've got great turnouts, and uh, uh, people are just wonderful about it. Uh, and I'm sure that's true in many of the countries. The truth embargo was practiced primarily in the United States uh, because, obviously, our government's influence was greatest, greater there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in terms of influencing the press and keeping it out of the universities and and undermining the research. It was mostly done there. It was not so much outside. So the, the people outside the U.S. are just less uh, propagandized. Right. And so while, while they, they have sort of fallen into the modality of the truth embargo and, and said, well, you know, probably not true. The government won't say anything. Uh, the, 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 the barrier to them jumping over and into the disclosure train or getting on the disclosure train is much lower. So it's the, the, the exopolitics uh, awareness and the disclosure movement is is growing faster, right now. It's still it's growing in the U.S. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but it's probably growing faster in, outside the U.S. Uh, but to give you a perspective of where things are, in prior to the year two thousand, mm-hmm. the word exopolitics was a very obscure, not formalized term that was used by maybe only one Greek political scientist who used it to explain some aspect of his writings. And so it turned up in maybe 10, 20 web pages uh, uh-huh. referencing this, this, this usage. Since the, the term was introduced by Alfred Labramont Weber in 2000 with his book, Exopolitics, Law and Governance of the Universe, uh, in 10 years, it's gone from about 20 pages to a Yahoo search of the single word, exopolitics, now brings back 1.5 million pages. Wow. Worldwide. On the web. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the web is worldwide. So 1.5 million pages. 
I predict it'll be three million pages in due course. And when you're in uh, in other countries, their media is the, are they more acceptable to it as well? The media in other countries, some 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 places mm-hmm. more, some places less. Um, uh, but they're open, and the international coverage is definitely there. Uh, if your viewers would go to uh, paradigmresearchgroup.org, uh, and they, they they click on the, the, the quick link there uh, for the news media archive, they will see about 3,400 articles that have been uh, archived there, uh, and most of them are in the last four years. Uh, and there, I've got nearly 800 that need to be loaded up. I, I'm, I'm three months behind. It's, it's, it, the articles are pouring in faster than I can, I can put them online. So the media is coming around. Mm-hmm. It, it isn't, it isn't where it should be yet, but it's coming around. And, and the government knows this. The government knows that its days are numbered there. That yeah, yeah, there's been some consolidation and some corporate ownership, but there's also been huge expansion of the media, uh, and it's all tied to the internet now. So that. Uh, you not only have a, a, a particular media entity, a television, a radio show, a newspaper, they have their website. And the websites get broad exposure. And so whereas in 1948, some local paper would put a, uh, an article about a sighting in it, and it would never be seen by a single soul outside of that city. Right. Now some small city could put a sighting report in their paper, and it makes it on the Internet, and it's being seen by people in Bangladesh. Right. So you see, uh, ultimately, the government cannot cannot maintain the, maintain the truth embargo. And another reason is the media is just about to flip. It's, it's getting very close to flipping. What's coming up for the Paradigm Research Group? What's in the future uh, for things that you're going to be doing? First and foremost, I've got to raise about seventy-five to $80,000 at least. Um, the last X conference, due to the economy's effect on attendance, uh, but it still had to go forward, lost 30000 So I've got to raise 40000 So now 40000 in debt. That's number one. Mm-hmm. That's another reason why I'm in Australia and elsewhere and trying to find some people outside the country who are not intimidated by the truth embargo and, and want, to, want to affect this issue and change the world, frankly. Mm-hmm. Um, then uh, I am trying to... I have to get the next X conference uh, planned, at least, and also continue to develop uh, a new conference that we want to have, which is called F- Contact 2010. Mm-hmm. The website is contact2010.com or com, com. Uh, and it's spelled out. It's not numbers. It's contact 2010 spelled out. Mm-hmm. Uh, that That's an important project. It, it will bring contactees and researchers to Washington to talk about what's going on there. Uh, and the goal is to bring the contact phenomena into the front line of the advocacy movement. That project's in the works. The facts on Washington at factsonwashington.org, FAX, still ongoing. We're continuing to promote that to get more letters and faxes and emails sent now to the White House Press Corps, basically saying we, we, we'd like you to start representing us instead of, you know, the government. Right. Start to ask really tough questions instead of soft questions and, and stop taking stupid propaganda for answers. Right. Um, and we're, we're going to continue to do that. Uh, I have another tour in Europe coming up uh, starting on the 6th of August, but it'll be smaller, maybe eight cities, nine cities. Uh, and uh, then I'll be back in the U.S. Uh, in late August. Um, th- and this is a taste of, uh, of uh, what Paradigm Research Group is, is doing. Um, and, of course, it continues to support any other initiatives out there like Jeff Peckman's uh, Extraterrestrial Affairs Commission initiative, ballot initiative in Denver, which goes to the vote rather in, in November. Uh, there's other things coming up. Um, let's see. On, on September the 27th, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Robert Salas and Robert Hastings are scheduled to hold a very important press conference at the National Press Club where they're going to bring a number of witnesses from the Malmstrom Air Force Base case to testify and further uh, uh, expand on one of the very significant events of the, of the 1960s, which was when the UFO came down and shut the missiles off at Maelstrom. Right. Uh, that's very important. Yes. All right. And uh, um, there is, oh, Steven Spielberg is, there's rumored he has plans for a huge social network. Uh-huh. Uh, I think called Studio 8. Uh built around the UFO ET issue that they may haul out. 
there's there's all kinds of shows and, and, and projects and documentaries in the works. Right. Uh, you know, behind the scenes, things are cooking that because enough people now are, 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 are have figured out that it, the big one is coming. Yes. Right. And so they're they're just busy and busy and busy. So there's plenty happening. But uh, by and large, the public only knows what the, the mainstream news is telling them. And the impression they're getting is they're reporting more. But there's nothing really big happening yet because the, the, the mainstream news won't cover that. Right. In other words, they will not cover much the truth embargo. They will not mention the word. Um, they will not address the really uh, deeper stuff. They, they are giving us coverage, and they're talking about disclosure, and they're, they're giving PRG coverage, and, and that's on my website, too. You can see it. I, mm -hmm. just, we just got, I just got written up in the Politico, which is an important newspaper in Washington, political mm -hmm. newspaper, very important. Too. So they're, they're doing it, but not, again, they don't go uh, to the degree they must go. Uh, so the public is still kind of not aware that perhaps the most, the, the most profound event in human history is, is, is headed right for them. But this is all putting more and more pressure on the government to finally say, okay, you know, we, we've got to, oh. we've got to form a position on this. We've got to do something. We've got to say something or everyone's yeah. going to be against us. It's, uh, you know, the truth embargo has, you know, again, I, I, it was, it was legal and it was uh, perhaps justified for national security reasons from the mm -hmm. beginning. But the fact is, is that regardless of how, uh, uh, good their intent was right the effect of the truth embargo has been to undermine trust in government from day one from 1947 forward to undermine trust in government to undermine the morale and faith of many of the people in government that have had to deal with it uh it has been corrosive and yes. it has definitely taken its toll now there's plenty of other things governments have done to undermine trust so that now people are deeply suspicious of anything the government does uh, but the truth embargo is certainly there, and, and, and that's another reason it has to end. We have to restore trust to government, uh, not, not see it go down even further. And that's a big plate of crow for the uh, government to, to swallow there. How do they apologize to the, to the world, to the American public? Hey, we've been lying to you for 60 years. Well, they won't say that. <laughs> they won't say that. They'll put a spin on it. Yeah. They'll apologize eventually, but not right away. Right. No, they're not going to come out and apologize. They might. I mean, it's not out of the question. Yeah. Uh, but they're not going to genuflect, and uh, there are plenty of ways to do this so that the government looks pretty good. Right. Um, so there, there, there. Look, there are some people that want an apology and they want it right away. But the vast, vast majority of people don't care. Right. They just want to talk about the ETs, mm -hmm. and so the government isn't going to have to apologize. But uh, it wouldn't be be nice if they they did some some um, fence mending uh, and down the line, but it'll be more down the line, maybe in six months, a year, two years. And paradigmresearchgroup.org, you do have a place there where people can uh, can give money to the organization, right? Oh, yeah. Where they consume. Um, you can contribute. It's not, it's not tax deductible. This is not a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. uh, not because it's a business to make money, because it ain't, I can assure you that, mm -hmm. but because by, by being a, uh, a sole proprietorship, it has even less. You you can you can you can be activist and, and even lobby if you're a nonprofit. You can, mm -hmm. and I encourage nonprofits to do that. But uh, there are some restrictions. But as a not sole proprietorship, for me, there are no restrictions. So that's why it is. But so it's not tax deductible. Though though we can we can get a tax deduction uh, if, if sizable contributions can be passed through a a a uh, a uh, uh, I guess you could say sister organization these are organizations that are nonprofits dealing with this issue mm -hmm. and they can they can bring money through them um, and uh, legally and so forth we can do that uh, the expat the political action committee can accept, can accept contributions at the expat site x hyphen ppac dot org they, those are not tax deductible either and they have to be American citizens but uh, and then of course um, um, people can contact me at any time uh, right. and discuss uh, ways they might be able to support the disclosure process. And your books and uh, merchandise or anything there on the uh, site does that help raise money? Well, it, we don't. We're not. We don't merchandise. Okay. Um, the, 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 there are AV organizations that have helped put on the X conference mm -hmm. are selling the DVDs in order to try to recoup their costs, but also to get the word out. 
Right. And so X Conference DVDs are available at uh, paranormalmatrix.com, mm -hmm. and they're available at Sedona Media Company. Dot com, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and these links are on the Paradigm Research Group website, um, and they can get they can get those. I, I don't have a book. I have I have a section of on the site called PRG Direct, and it's a free service that PRG provides. And it, what is it, it? It has links up there to books and DVDs of other researchers and activists mm -hmm. who are selling it directly, uh, in order so that th th when you buy it that way, as opposed to Amazon or these right. bookstores. They get four, five, six, eight times more uh, return from that, and so PRG Direct is trying to help raise some money for them. But it's not; it does no money comes to, uh, so it's not a business enterprise for PRG. Right. Um, but beyond that, uh, there's there's not that kind of commercial stuff on, and there's no advertising on the site other than a couple of links to to some direct supporters of PRG. But there's no commercial advertising. And your website's an excellent resource for the media to get information to get truth about yeah. the uh, uh, truth embargo. A little bit, you know, I just haven't had the time to upgrade it, uh, and and uh, I need to develop some skills. Uh, so it's kind of like a shag rug. Mm -hmm. You walk into the park, it's kind of like seeing a shag. It's a nice shag rug, but, it's, you know, mm -hmm. 1970. So it's a bit dated. I apologize for that. But information-wise, it's loaded. Okay. Well, Stephen, thank you very much for being my guest tonight on Conundrums. Great. Glad to be with you, Mike. Uh, good luck with the show. Uh, anytime you need me, you give me a call. And uh, don't we love technology? We do. I'm doing this interview from Melbourne, Australia, on 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 a Skype video. It didn't cost me anything. Uh, that's power. That that's why ultimately the the public will win in these very large issues that are that are that are being faced by uh, because it, it wants if we use this power and, and obviously we are more and more every day. So congratulations on the show and look forward to talking to you soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Stephen. The following program has been brought to you by Shoulder Shooter at Shouldershooter.com. Get steady, shake-free shots with your large or handheld camcorder with the Shoulder Shooter.